Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Big shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you smash the subscribe button down there. Turn on that little bell notification as well because I love doing these videos on a daily basis, documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through, it would really help me push the channel out to a lot more people because the YouTube algorithm is absolute magic when you do that. All right, let's get straight into it. Little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. Please jump on all the websites I recommend in these videos and I use. They will give you a lot of confidence before jumping into this stuff, all right? So please be careful, do your own research. Do not take what I say as financial advice. All right, now the formalities are out of the way. Yes, this is a post that I saw on Twitter and it's probably satire, I'm not sure. It says that according to various sources, the lawsuit between Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, may be over. Allegedly, after a more than a year of litigation, Ripple can now breathe a sigh of relief. Sources on the matter reported that the company and the SEC have reached a settlement agreement. One of the sources added that official announcement about the deal will be made next week. I don't know if that's true. We'll see what happens, guys. It's probably a satire um, news article, which I found on Twitter. But anyway, let's just have a look, quick look at all this stuff. This is CoinSpot. This is where I buy my cryptos in Australia. Please feel free to use the referral link below. You can get $10 in Bitcoin to get you started. All these prices are in Australian dollars. And please be careful with, uh, obviously, any crypto purchases, all right? Do your own research. All right, Bitcoin's sitting at 52000 k right now. It is down on the day. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty because apparently Joe Biden is going to be signing an executive order in relation to cryptos and the regulations over there in the United States, which is obviously causing a lot of uncertainty. Uh, obviously, Ethereum sitting at three and a half thousand dollars right now. XRP is a dollar and one cent. That is still incredibly cheap, guys. The dollar cost average into, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing some pretty crazy stuff in this case. And John E. Deaton as well just put up a significant tweet, um, which is like giving an entire outlook um on the case versus you know ripple versus the ssc so it's very interesting we'll get into that in a second luna's 111 cardano dollar 12 solana 115 avax 101 polka dot 23 dollars australian polygon matic is a dollar 99 crow as well 53 cents cosmos is 40 dollars <clears throat> near protocols at 13 dollars you've got tron at eight cents <clears throat> excuse me link seventeen dollars you've got ftt at 56 dollars right now up two percent algo is a dollar three Mana at three dollars and thirty-three cents. Stellar XLM is at twenty-four cents. These are all my favorites. FTM is a dollar eighty-six. You've got Sandbox up slightly to three dollars and ninety-five cents. It is still down from its all-time highs. You've got VeChain sitting at six cents right now. What else we got here, guys? Axe Infinity sixty-five dollars. You've got Theta at three dollars ninety-three. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Waves is up twenty-eight percent, thirty-two dollars right now. And I mentioned this yesterday in my video. My trading bot's been going crazy on waves, just saying up 28%. I need to look into that further. What else have we got here, guys? You've got EOS at $2.73. You've got RV, $168. The graph I'm holding as well, $0.47. Cents. Harmony, $1.18. Cents. Gala at $0.30. Cents. You've got NEO at $28. You've got Quant at $155 right now. It's still a good entry point for Quant. Uh, keep scrolling down here, guys. Rose is at $0.30 cents right now. And of course, XDC, one of my favorites, is at $0.06. Cents. Now, just a quick one. If I go to top 24 gainers right now, Immutable X. Now, I've got some interesting stuff about Immutable X as well. Aussies raising a significant amount of money for this project. It's incredible. I'll get into that in a second. Obviously, you've got Waves here pumping. Nabilo, have no idea what that is. And Kyber, Argo, Hi-Fi, Golem, and R-Wave as well. So anyway, that's pretty much it for that. Let's go to the news. Crypto bubbles quickly. Let's just have a look here and see what's going on in the day. I'm going to change this. Oh, drop my pen. Let's have a look. All right, so you've got waves pumping 27%. I did mention this yesterday in my video. Um, literally in the last 24 hours, it's gone up 27%. That is crazy stuff. So that's the reason why my bot's been going mental. I am only invested on my trading bot with that. You've got Ton, Coin, AR, Helium, Celo, and Theta. Hedera as well is up 2.7%, which is nice. Flow, Harmony One, BNB, Usual, Aave. That's pretty much it in terms of the altcoins right now which is still incredible buying opportunities and if you go to um, cryptometer.io in the last hour you've got bnb and waves the money is flowing in there and in the last day you've got luna eur and ust and bnb obviously you've got xrp doge as well i'm not buying any more doge waves and fet 
There you go. So that's pretty much where the money is flowing right now. Now, in relation to Immutable X, obviously I'm I'm big on Ecomi and they are partnering up with Ecomi as well. So Immutable X, zero gas fees, instant trades and scalability for games, applications, marketplaces without compromise. This is incredible as well. Look at their Coinbase, obviously Apex Capital, um, Nirvana Capital as well. Um, incredible you know, project here, really, when you think about it, it's pumping absolutely crazy today. But check this out here, Aussie Crypto Star Immutable Banks, $280 million at $3.5 billion valuation. So Sydney-based crypto platform, Immutable has soared $3.5 billion valuation after closing a $280 million funding round led by Singaporean sovereign fund, t -Masc. Unbelievable, guys. With money from uh, Gaming Star and Nomica Brands and the Chinese tech and video gaming tech giant, uh, 10 cent there guys so again the funding round just comes just after six months after immutable raised 82 million dollars and also includes investments from local venture capital firms airtree ventures and king river capital which both have dedicated web3 investment funds immutable is shaping as the most fa um, fancied australian operator in web3 space so again we're aussies here guys that's pretty cool which often characterizes by users by owning and control and controlling their data it is the developer publisher Gods of Unchained and Guild of Guardians, two non-fungible non tokens, NFT-based video games that allow players to only trade, so, oh, sorry, to own and trade assets within the games. However, the most valuable arm of Immutable X, which builds fast NFT marketplaces for companies including TikTok, GameStop, Illuvium, as well as a crazy project, and Ember Sword. Just pointing it out there that this could all be linked in with the VV app and um, Ecomi, just putting it out there. Because again, I've been saying that Ecomi is an undervalued project, but there could be something happening here with Immutable X, obviously with this migration. And again, the whole thing with the NFT marketplace with VV. So that could all be tying in with this NFT marketplace because I know that they are partnering with you. So again, this is back a while, back in December. So Ecomi and Immutable X's partnership to boost premium NFTs on the Ethereum network. Now again, I'm still looking into this. I haven't had time to do this with the migration from Ecomi from GoChain to ERC20. I'm still doing that. I still have mine on the GoChain. I need to do that Ethereum swap there to put them on the ERC20 network. So going to be interesting there, guys. But I guess my main concern is losing a significant amount in gas fees. So I'm sure that there's the website um, that allows you to swap them over from GoChain to ERC20. I'm still doing that, but I'm just fearful about those gas fees, so I'm gonna to need to look into that. Some other updates about this uh, Ripple lawsuit. Again, there's a lot happening here and it's coming out. Uh, just have a quick read of this. So the lawyers expect XRP lawsuit to end before November 18. This is really interesting. So the discussion of when Ripple versus SEC lawsuit will end is been dragging on for many months now as the blockchain company risks missing out on business opportunities while the case lingers in XRP holders await the relisting of the digital assets. So Ripple appears to be expecting the lawsuit to end between August and November 18. According to the information, including the joint stipulation and proposed order modifying the case schedule of the um, pending class action parallel to the SEC lawsuit. This is what I was saying yesterday. Everything's going to be coming out in November. You've got this case potentially setting with Rip, uh, settling with the SEC with Ripple. You've got ISO 222, the migration has to be transferred. All banks have to make the switch by November as well. Crazy stuff happening. It's all happening in November, the new banking world. So you've got summary judgment in September or settlement before. The letter was filed on February 23rd, as uh, and it states the start date of the class action lawsuit would be August 26, but the parties have agreed to start on November 18, 2022. Due to the overlap of factual little legal issues between the case and the SEC action, the par these parties or the parties agree that there are inf insufficiencies in having certain aspects of the SEC action precedes certain deadlines in this action. Doing so will reduce the burden on the parties, streamline discovery in the case, and potentially reduce the burden of the court by narrowing the issues in despite, uh, in dispute, sorry, says the document filed by Su uh, Suzanne E. Nero, attorney of King and Spalding LLP. So again, the argument in this SEC vs. Ripple is c concurrent lit litigation that involves many of the same factual and legal questions at the uh, issue, uh, sorry, at issue in this case, uh, there would be efficiencies in allowing XRP lawsuit brought forward by the SEC to proceed in this case. The court documents suggest that Ripple lawyers expect the SEC versus Ripple to be over not before August 26, 
and not before 26, which raises the likelihood of a summary of judgment in September, predicted by attorney Jeremy Hogan. And there you go, Hogan and Hogan Law Firm. So I think the Ripple uh, thinks it wins the SEC case September, October, and the class action goes away due to collateral estoppel, Hogan commented. Crazy legal language right here, man. So this is crazy stuff what's happening here. And again, this is what I was saying before, Biden to sign crypto order as firms face sanctions pressure. This is pretty full on. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty in relation to this. And this is probably the reason why we're seeing Bitcoin absolutely crashing today and going down. Um, what else we got here, guys? Blockchaincenter.net. Apparently, this is backed by somebody. Uh, I believe it's, I don't know if it's JP Morgan or something like that. I have to look into this. But again, altcoin season is no more. It's going straight to Bitcoin season. And the top performing assets in the last 90 days are Osmo, Leo, Waves, Adam, Luna, Near, and Frax. I have no idea what those are. Waves, I am invested on three commas right now. You've got FTT, XRP, FTM, Clay, AVAX, XMR, and Bitcoin as well down, you know, 20%, 8%. I'm not even concerned about that because, again, we're very early in this stuff. Now, if I go over to Twitter, I'm going to show you something really interesting here, guys. This is from Linda P. Jones. Thank you for this tweet. This is how the ISO 222 cryptos will be backed with value like gold, silver, copper, copper, palladium, etc., and used in a new new financial system. You've got Ripple being backed by gold. XLM is silver, XTC is copper, Algo is palladium, and IOTA iridium. So that's pretty crazy stuff right there. And this is how all this system is going to actually work. These pretty incredible diagrams. I'm not sure who put these together, but that's pretty crazy. And uh, check this out here. I literally can't believe, now thank you, Keith, XDC for this one. I literally can't believe software like XDC is trading under five cents right now. This will be one of the biggest wealth transfers ever, straight up. And I agree, XDC is incredibly undervalued right now compared to its other, you know, you know, parties, you know, all their banking coins, guys. It's so undervalued right now. This is an interesting one as well. So check this out. Can I buy crypto, please? Artwork worth $70 million is up for sale for Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's incredible. Let's see what's happening there. You've got Bank Alpha mentions in its partnership with Ripple in their 2021 annual report, noting its speed, security, and importance of scaling uh, remittances. Bank Alpha also recently partnered with Ripple partner Lulu Exchange in the UAE, guys. So this is incredible as well. So check this out here. As an industry first, the bank has integrated its remittance payment system with RippleNet. Ripple's global blockchain payments network to offer faster and more secure payment services and remittance customers. Through this integration, the bank will be able to scale its services and offer market launches and newly onboarded RippleNet partners in a quicker way. So again, this is just one part of Ripple, straight up. You can imagine what's going to happen with their private ledger, with all the ledger once it gets up and running and this case is out of the way, what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. Fear and Greed Index is sitting at 21 right now. Not really worried. You've got this Spanish banking multinational Santander. I'm invested in the stock market, by the way. Has launched loans in Argentina, collateralized with tokenized commodities. That's just getting started. So check this out from Digital Asset Investor. Thank you for this tweet. So it's not clear with XRP as a security to Brett Redfern, SEC Director of Vision and Trade and Markets on June 6, 2018. He already knows Ethereum is about to get a free pass. Listen closely as it's almost as if uh, Bob Pisani already knows Ripple will be sued. So check this out right here. And Ether. Thanks very much, Melissa. Brett, we've known each other many years, but this is our first interview in your role as Division Director of uh, Trading and Markets at the SEC. Let me just pick up on the whole Bitcoin uh, and blockchain issue. We spoke to Chairman Clayton this morning. He made it very clear that he was supportive of the concept of the blockchain, but he was not going to change the definition of a security to suit anybody's interests. When can we expect some clarification on some important issues? For example, are ICOs securities, is alt currencies, alt coins like uh, Ripple and Ether uh, securities as well? Give us some idea of when we might be able to get clarification. You know, one thing that I've realized uh, when looking at these issues is that it's not as obviously as obvious as you would think, right? So we've had a number of different products that we've looked at and. We've, we've created this prong test, the Howey test, where people look at the different characteristics and have to determine it's a security. And quite frankly, not all of them are obvious on its face exactly what it is. So we continue to try to clarify where possible. I think that there will be more statements coming forth from the commission on this. But in the meantime, we're highly encouraging any market participant who's involved in the space to really look at these products and, and run that test and decide whether or not they meet 
the prongs of being defined as a security. The chairman declined to say whether Ether or Ripple were actual securities, but is it fair to say that this is likely ultimately going to be litigated in the courts? Uh, it's unclear to me whether or not that's going to be litigated, and I don't want to speak about any specific products, and I do believe that there will be statements on at least one of those products forthcoming in the future about, you know, providing some more, more guidance on that. Um, so... I don't know what the, the, the likelihood is of litigation, though, on those specific products. So will we need still six months, a year down the road? I guess the, the, the community keeps asking us, when will we get some clarification? Will we know a year from now? Will, will these issues be resolved? I mean, you know, I think the messaging from the chairman and the commission has been pretty clear. That when he looks at ICOs, there's a number of these products where he has said they do meet the definition of a security. And by meeting the definition of a security, there's a lot of things that go along with that. There's broker-dealer registration. There's are you trading on... Pretty incredible that that, uh, obviously, Ethereum, he knew was going to get a free pass right there. And I'd wonder why, because obviously Ethereum is now backed by JPM, JP Morgan. There's all this stuff going on with consensus and Joe, you know, Lubin right there. It's crazy stuff what's happening there. And I think they went after Ripple again because I think, you know, again, they were just favoring J JP Morgan, obviously one of the biggest financial institutions on the planet. Anyway, some other stuff here, guys. Now, I just want to point out, look at this. Um, these, all these facts from Johnny Deaton. I just want to read them through. 16 facts proving the case is um, dead on arrival. That's what it means. On February 8th, 2012, You've got Jeb McCaleb and Jess Poe receive legal opinion from, Le from Perkins & Co. informing them that if they sell XRP to investors and use the money for operational costs, XRP will likely be an investment contract. Keep scrolling down here. After receiving above legal opinion, Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb scrap the old business model and instead seek venture capital funding for business operations. Investors will not receive XRP, but instead receive actual shares of stock in the company Ripple which I'd love to do. Keep scrolling down here. Larson and McKaylee have received their second opinion from Perkins & Coe on October 19, 2012. Based on the new business model, they are advised XRP is most likely not a security. The letter hints risks relating to banking scarcity laws and being labeled a money services business. On 2015, Ripple was sued by FinCEN consistent with risks finding uh, um, Referenced in the legal memo, FinCEN declared a subsidiary of Ripple and Money Services Business classified XRP as a convertible virtual currency. Virtual currency, making that clear. Ripple settled $700,000 and agreed to register sales with FinCEN. Pursuant to the terms of the settlement and DOJ and FinCEN, Ripple agreed to register sales of XRP only through FinCEN. The agreement forces Ripple to comply with the banking laws of the United States, not securities laws. That is straight there. On the 13th of June, 2018, the SEC lawyers write a legal memo analyzing XRP as a security, and it does not recommend enforcement. Very interesting. It's clear the SEC owns, uh, SEC's own analysis did not conclude XRP was a security. One, uh, one the SEC would turn over memo, and two, they would would have informed Ripple, which is interesting as well. June 14, 2018, Hinman speech, the market absolutely viewed the speech as a market guidance. Attorney, attorneys Nancy Wotas and Wendy Moore participated in the SEC's meetings and described the impact the best. Uh, it's impact the best in, uh, if your platform is slightly more decentralized than Ethereum, you are free. This is the interview right here. In the clip above, Wotas said, if you can do just a little bit better than Ethereum, you're golden. Seven, because Hinman only blessed Bitcoin and Ethereum in his speech, August 20, 2018, Brad Garlinghouse and Joel Katz met with Clayton and Hinman to discuss XRP. Brad was informed them Ripple is living in a purgatory over XRP's lack of clarity. The next month, September 2018, Garlinghouse met with Commissioner Elad Roisman during the, this meeting. Not only did Roisman not inform Brad that the SEC considered XRP as a security, Roisman made statements that gave Garlinghouse confidence that XRP wasn't viewed as a security. That is facts. Roisman's lawyers, Estabrook notes, took during this meeting claiming privilege the SEC refused to turn over these notes. It should be noted, however, the SEC provided notes other than meetings between Garlinghouse and the SEC. The notes clearly corroborate, corroborate sorry, Brad's testimony. I'm turning to a lawyer here. January 19th, Coinbase meeting with the SEC. This is basically them clarifying whether, you know, with the SEC if XRP is a security, which they said the SEC did not, and sorry, did not, and XRP was listed on Coinbase February 2019. So basically they've asked if it was a security. They didn't say it wasn't a security, so they listed it. 
2019, the SEC allowed Ripple to acquire a 9% stake of MoneyGram. Ripple filed notice with SEC forming it, its intended use of XRP and MoneyGram. In short, the SEC knew Ripple would transfer XRP to MoneyGram, who would then sell it to retail holders via exchanges. The SEC now claims XRP and money sold by MoneyGram to retail holders via exchanges are also sales of unregistered securities. To December 2019, or oh, sorry, 4th of December 2019, the Financial Stability Oversight Council annual report is issued, which classifies XRP as a currency. Clayton, as chairman of the SEC, voted to approve the report and signed it. This is like a closing statement, like Jeremy Hogan just says in his post. January 2020 and 2021, after the lawsuit is filed, Baylard and Money Manager Business, a perfect example of what a market participant believed, filed an ethics disclosure with the SEC, blah, blah, blah. This just goes on and on and on. And basically, this is saying that this thread is like a closing argument, even has exhibits. Just goes to show it's not a security, man. This is going to be ruled in Ripple's favor and have been people within the SEC as well, apparently that have said that they believe um, the case is not going to be won by the SEC. So again, just crazy stuff what's happening right here. Very, very bullish times what's happening in the market right now. It's unbelievable to think that we have an opportunity to dollar cost average. And no, I'm not looking at my portfolio every day, freaking out, because again, I only invest what I can afford to lose, but I'm not stressing about it. So I'm just letting it do its thing, just dollar cost averaging into this stuff while we still can. Now, three commas trading, but again, it is down today and has made me some profits with waves. That's pretty much it. Put up a video a couple of days ago on setting up these bots. So go and have a look at that on the channel if you're interested. There is a referral link for three commas below. Feel free to use that. You can get a decent trial in that. If we go to um, the total crypto market right now on coin market cap, going to open this up. It's obviously 1.7 trillion down to 85 billion in volume. Bitcoin is sitting at 42%, Ethereum 17%. It'd be incredible to see once this case ends with the SEC, XRP, Flip Ethereum, that would just be game changing right there. Waves is pumping up 25 or 28%. R-Weave 10%. Anchor Protocol as well, 9.16. Zcash, Helium, ThorChain is down as well. And uh, just going to have a quick look at my portfolio today. Bitcoin sitting at 38,000. Right now, it is down today, 0.06%. Guys, I'm not even worried about that. It will go back up. Everyone's a little bit uncertain about Mr. Biden and his crypto regulation. You've got 72 cents XRP, it is up 0.74% today. Cardano, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Polygonmatic, Near Protocol. Tron as well is sitting at 5 cents USD. It's incredibly cheap right now, so a good time to add to your bags. I will do a video on Tron. Mana, Stella, Hedera, Sandbox, VChain, 4 cents right now. Theta Network, BTT, The Graph, Harmony One, Gala Games, Neo as well, I love. $20, that's incredibly cheap. It's like a, you know, a, um, a Chinese-based Ethereum, pretty much. Amp, Theta Fuel, Oasis Rose, Hollow. Ecomi, again, Immutable X. Something might be brewing behind the scenes there with uh, the VV app and the NFT marketplace. This all could be happening. Anchor Protocol, XDC, Sinfin, guys, is so cheap right now. At $0.04, cents, it should already be up at you know the $70 to a dollar mark without blinking an eye there. It should be Sia Coin, Reveille, Nervous Network, Telcoin, Digibyte, MetaHero, Winlink, Superfarm, XYO, UFO Gaming, Constellation, DAG. What else have we got here, guys? Reserve Rights, Reef as well is a hidden gem. It is under a cent right now, so I'm filling my bags with this one. Now, I've just seen a Reddit tweet that the founder, uh, Machensky, um, come from pronounce his first name here, but if I open this up, I think it's Danko Machensky. Here we go here. Danko Machensky is speaking at the Binance conference as well about Reef. I saw a uh, Reddit post about that. So we could see some movement in Reef. It is up 2.3% today, which is nice. Vthor, Proton XPR, Electronium, Veracity, Kin, Star Atlas, Acropolis, Gas. Obviously, I get paid that passively from holding NEO. Ubix Network as well. Very early stage Ethereum uh, sort of program. Layer 1. I am holding a decent bag of that. Olympus Dow, I think, is a rug pull, and Pipple as well is at 1.8%, but that's just a gamble for me. So that's pretty much it in terms of the market. What do you think of all this stuff going on in this case? Do you think it's settled or there's a, a settlement that's taken place? Let me know in the comments below. It would be nice, but again, I think it's satire. Who knows right now, guys, but it's incredible buying opportunities while the market is quiet. Speak soon. Have a good day. Peace. Bye.